but we have trouble because, as I said, football coaches typically come from a slow background. Uh, football coaches are grinders. Football coaches come early, stay late. They love their coach. They bought into everything that was the traditional football approach, and they have a hard time coaching cats. Uh, this guy ran Oregon into the ground, and he ran, he's now running Miami into the ground. Uh, but he, you know, he has professional photo ops like this, showing these nuts. Uh, every football staff has people, I've, I've talked to, consulted with head football coaches who all in, feed the cats, all in. He said, I'm just really worried about, I think there's three guys on my staff that will quit. Think about that. Uh, we have a sign that says champions are born in the weight room. You know, I think you should chase infinite speed, not infinite strength. Just saying. Uh, most stuff in the weight room came from bodybuilding and powerlifting. I, and I know that they all do functional training now and all that kind of stuff. But still, it, we have to see it. For, I mean, our weight room has mirrors. Right? And the non-negotiables for me is never let training interfere with the sport. Should be, like, of course. You know, you shouldn't be, like, going to a personal trainer or lifting in the morning and not being able to play well and practice it. No. And never let the weight room interfere with speed. So if you are going to crush their legs, big squat day, do it at the end of the week when they have the weekend off. Or don't crush them. But these are non-negotiables for me. I think that a lot of football coaches see me and my kind as kind of like a, you know, like a Frank Zappa type guy, you know, like he's soft, you know, blah, blah, blah. But I, I think that athlete, good athletes are soft. Uh, this is a guy I trolled really bad. He, he, uh, he put a, a Twitter thing out, uh, uh, a speed ladder, and guys are tippy-toeing, University of Illinois, tippy-toeing. He goes, uh, slow feet don't eat, hashtag slow feet don't eat, speed training, you, you know, like a line eye. I'm like, come on, you're an idiot. And I, I looked up his, uh, first of all, during his 10 years there, they won 23% of their games. And do you know how hard it is to only win 23% of your games in the Big Ten? Because you're paying three teams a million dollars to come in and kick their ass, right? Like teams that don't have your players. You're going to pay them a million dollars, and you're going, to, you know, you're going to be a 21-point favorite. So, so it's kind of like you won 23% of your games before the season starts. So in his bio, all he talked about was like five years later, uh, we had 35 guys that were power cleaning 300, and we had all these guys that could bench 405. He's just talking like meathead numbers while they're running through speed ladders. It's crazy. So when they fired him, they brought in a guy named Tank um, that um, literally got married in a weight room. Can't make it up. This guy played for my son. He was the captain of the Eagles in 2020, not with him anymore. Uh, he came back and talked to uh, my son's team. Said, don't let them take away your speed. As soon as you get there, they're going to pack the weight on you and have you live in the weight room. It's just what they do. And this is always the case. I've never been as fast as I was in high school. All these people that think that NCAA players are much faster than high school guys, talk to Les Bellman. No way. No way. You go, well, Ty, uh, you know, Tyree Kill, I mean, he's fast. Yeah, you know how fast he was when he was 18? Faster than he is now. Yeah, they're bigger. They're older. I mean, no, high school kids are, you know, all these coaches acting like they got 23 mile an hour guys in high school. They do. And they'll be 22 or 21 after four years of college. Just saying. Um... You know, you just got to be careful about believing that the more weight you can lift, the better you are. It just doesn't happen. Speed isn't soft. These guys kick your ass. I love them. 
Um, we'll end with just a, a couple of things, lessons from other sports. Steph Curry runs about three miles in a basketball game. What, what would be the intuitive thing that somebody might think he should do every day? Three miles, right? Three miles are running. And that's, that's intuitive. But we know better, hopefully. We know better because we know he needs to lift heavy, even though you'll never lift anything in a basketball game. Sprint fast, even though you cannot hit maximal speed on a basketball court. You need to jump high and far. That is pretty specific. And you need to bounce. The athletic things. That's what he needs to do. But what about the three miles? Let the sport train the sport. Play basketball. Well, the faster he is also, the easier that three miles of running will be. Correct. Yeah. And the less, the less energy toll that will take because you're so efficient. So he does like, you know, shoots 10 threes doing this. I think it's too, probably 50% too much. I think running back and forth and shooting five and then getting a drink of water and doing it again would be better than doing 10. But th th this is basketball, right? People say, oh, he's conditioning. No, no. I think that's basketball. Let the sport train the sport. And then we'll end with this. Um, Soccer coaches, you know, hey, college soccer, nine miles are running. Does, does she look like a marathon runner? No, and, and every college coach that wants to argue with me wants to recruit her. Every single one of them. What are you looking for, coach? Good soccer players that are fast and explosive. Always the case. Always. But then they're just addicted to this endurance stuff that she probably doesn't like to do. I don't know her. But she probably doesn't like running nine. Well, how is she going to run nine miles in a game? Play some soccer. Well, Coach Wolf, she's not ready in the first game. Sub. Let the season train the season. Uh, Penn's lacrosse coach said, Coach, I love all your stuff, but man, we play a 60-minute game. Game one, we have to be ready. I said, what's more important, game one or game 30? Well, obviously game 30. Well, sub more early. Let, let the season train the season. Let the sport train the sport. Stop doing like nine mile runs to prepare for nine miles of playing soccer. Uh, Brian Kula uh, sprint trained aquatics, uh, Highland Aquatics Swim Club. And he says the worst sprinters he's ever had in his life. But they all improved by like two miles an hour. They broke 48 swim records. Princeton lacrosse made the final four because they went from having three guys at 20 miles an hour to having 17 at 20. And they stopped doing conditioning. And they just ran circles around people late in games. This is one of my favorites. He, uh, Kula speed trained a uh, golfer, a female golfer. And uh, she got faster, and amazingly, her club speed, seven miles an hour faster. Because, okay, quiz time. Because, <laughs> why would the club speed get faster? Because your CNS is better. Your CNS is better. And the most extreme thing you can do with your CNS is sprinting. So, so uh, that's kind of why they do it. Uh, Boo Schexnader, this is why. Eight years ago now, I heard him on a podcast. Training volleyball, girl volleyball team. How do you train them? Like McCaffrey, sprint, bounce, hard wiring sprint habits, power. But sprinting doesn't make any sense to a volleyball athlete, right? They don't, they only take like two steps. There's no sprinting in volleyball. But the CNS controls all that stuff. And I think we all understand that if you get faster, you jump higher, your first step's faster and all that stuff.